Hi. Nice to meet you. My name is Songja Park, and today I would like to introduce a, a little project of mine, the name, the GCMA, the Guaranteed Contiguous Memory Allocator. Uh, first, I would like to introduce myself. My name is, as I said before, uh, Songja Park, and I am currently pursuing PhD at Seoul National University. And I am interested in memory management and parallel programming for OS kernels. So I am a graduate student rather than an expertized engineer. So maybe my present would be not so good, but please keep in mind that. Uh, so first, I would like to say about the requirements of the contiguous memory allocation. Uh, because we uh, already live in the world of the virtualized memory systems, uh, someone who first started to becoming a kernel newbie programmer would wonder why the contiguous, physically contiguous memory allocation is necessary. Because the, there is the memory management unit it resides between the CPU and the physical memory and because it can translate the virtual address into the physical address, we can use the virtual memory system which is mapping the any virtual address space to the any physical memory space. So in this case, we don't need uh, contiguous memory allocation. But it is really necessary for the device using direct memory access. There are many devices such as the camera or video camcorder and network interface card. And such a device need a large internal buffer to keep the data in memory and to communicate with the CPU or other device. For example, we can think of about the 12 megapixel camera or 10 Gbps network interface card or uh, maybe GPGPU or something else. And because the memory management unit which translates the virtual address space to the physical address space is resides behind the CPU, the device directly addressing the memory without the CPU cannot use the virtual address because there is no MMU which can translate the device address space to physical memory address space. And there is another case which is requiring the contiguous memory allocation. It is the huge pages. A system can have multiple size of pages, usually four KB bytes, which is called regular pages, and two megabytes, which is called huge pages. Also, there are many systems using another size of huge pages. For example, the x86 can have one gigabyte pa huge page, which is called gigantic pages. And the use of the huge pages can improve system performance by reducing TRB means, which in case the TRB means occurs, it requires the page table work, which is very, very expensive. So, and the huge page, importance of the huge pages is growing for now because the modern workloads, including big data and cloud and machine learning, are uh, memory intensive, intensive, as the name of the big data says. So the systems equipping the terabytes of the RAM are not real now. And especially because it is the era of the co cloud computing and because almost every computing system is running on the virtualized system, uh, the importance of huge page is even growing because in case of the virtualization, if the TRB miss occurs, the cost of the page table work would be double because it should work on the uh, guest and then host. So, however, the two megabyte huge page is just uh, 512 physical contiguous regular pages. So we need contiguous memory allocation in this case either. And of course, there are many existing solutions, but the existing solutions all have some limitations. First of all, there are, there is, there are some hardware solutions. The idea behind the hardware solution is very simple. It, it, it just adds some MMU-like additional hardware for device. In short, there are some devices such as IO MMU and Scatter Gather DMA. IO MMU works as the MMU for device, 
and the scattergather DMA allow the device to scatter and gather data to and from the memory. So IOMMU and the scattergather DMA can give the contiguous device memory illusion, but it is just an illusion. And the additional hardware means the increase of power consumption and price, which is unaffordable for low-end devices such as a device for Internet of Things or extremely low-end mobile phones. And uh, such an illusion is useless for many cases, including the huge pages, because they are just giving illusion, but not the real physically contiguous memory, though the huge pages need real contiguous memory. And more worse, the hardware solution is not only expensive, but it also imposes overhead. The graph is from the last year Linux Promage conference which is presented by the Christoph Lemter and his colleagues. The, name, the presentation name was the user space contiguous memory location for DMA. This shows the RDMA read performance with and without the contiguous, pa with contiguous pages and the one which is using the scattergather DMA. And it clearly shows the overhead. So hardware-based solutions are well known for low overhead, but though it is very low, the lower than the software-based solutions, the overhead is inevitable and it really exists. Second, there is the reserved area technique. Reserved area technique is a very simple idea. It just reserves sufficient amount of contiguous area, memory area at boot time because there is no fragmentation at boot, early boot time. And then let only contiguous memory allocation to use the reserved area. It is very simple and effective for continuous memory allocation. It is really powerful, and it can serve the co continuous memory allocation very well. But uh, if the reserved area is not fully used by the, the continuous allocation request for 24 hours per seven days, the memory space the memory space utilization could be very low. However, this is the one which is widely adapted to today's systems despite of the utilization problem. And we have CMA, the Contiguous Memory Allocator. It is the software-based another solution in the Linux kernel in today. We can say the CMA as a generously extended version of the reserved area technique. It mainly focuses on memory utilization problem of the reserved area technique. It Reserves the, uh, it reserves sufficiently large area in boot time as the reserve area technique does, but it let movable pages to use the reserved area. And if contiguous memory allocation requires the pages being used for movable pages, the CMA can move those pages out of the reserved area and then use the vacant area for the contiguous memory allocation request. It can solve the memory utilization problem well because general pages are movable. In other words, we can say that CMA gives different priority to clients of the reserved area. There is two kinds of clients. One is primary client, which is contiguous memory allocation, and the secondary client is the movable page allocation. However, unlike our expectation, the CMA in real world shows some limitation. First of all, it is a little slow, slower than the reserved area technique. We have measured the latency, of latency for taking a photo using camera app on Raspberry Pi 2 under some memory, severe memory stress. We have used the block bench, benchmark to give the memory stress. And then we measured 30 times. We measured the latency 30 times. The result is as you show. The x axis shows the latency and the y axis shows the cumulative probability of the 30 measurements. So the worst case latency for reserved area technique was just 1.6 seconds. But meanwhile, the 
Worst case latency with CMA was even 9.8 seconds. We can say that it is really unacceptable. And the real reason of the slow latency of the camera application was the latency of the CMA. We have measured the latency of the continuous memory allocation using the CMA under the situation we have seen. And it's, it shows that the worst case latency of the continuous memory allocation using CMA was about 10 seconds. So it's clear that latency of the camera application was due to the CMA. So why is it so slow? In short, we can say that uh, second client of the CMA was not so nice as we have expected. First of all, moving the page out from the reserved area to some other outer area is an expensive task. We should copy the contents of the page and then we should control the RMAP and turn list recently used list and something else. So it is very, it is originally very expensive. And if someone is holding the page, for example, if some kernel thread is using a get user page or something else, we should wait until the kernel thread to release the page. So as a result, there seems it show, as a result, it shows the unexpectedly long latency and even failure of the allocation. That's why CMA is not adapted to many devices. For example, the Raspberry Pi has tried to use the CMA as a buffer for device, but it have forgiven to use CMA after some while. And I also, we know that there are many products using the CMA, but as far as I know, many, many vendors of such systems are using some trick, tricks for CMA. And there is also a body allocator. Body allocator adaptively split and merge adjacent contiguous pages and maintains, by maintain the contiguous pages, they can give us some contiguous page allocation. And it is highly optimized and heavily used in the Linux kernel because it is the number one allocator for page allocation. But there is some limitations. It supports only multi-order contiguous pages. And the size of the supporting pages is up to the max order minus one order contiguous pages. And the main problem of the body allocator is on the fragmentation, it does time consuming compaction and then try the, try the allocation again, or it just fails. So this is not good news for continuous memory requesting tasks. And the transparent huge pages use body allocator to allocate huge pages for them. It quickly falls back to regular pages if it fails to allocate continuous pages to uh, guarantee the fast latency. But as a result, it cannot be used on highly fragmented memory system. So we have measured the performance of the transparent huge pages on the high fragmented, fragmented memory system. The default means the uh, THP disabled one, and the THP means the THP enabled one, and the THP.F means the THP enabled system on fragmented system. And the, this graph shows the performance, the runtime of queries of the TPCH Benchmark TPCH is a uh, database benchmark simulating the OLAP workload, which is very intensive for data. So we can show that the transparent huge page really <coughs> increased the performance of the database in this graph because this is showing the normalized runtime normalized by the default case. The short, the lower is better. So the THP really improved the performance, but if the system is fragmented, the THP doesn't give the improvement and even it shows worse performance. So finally, I will 
introduce the guaranteed contiguous memory allocator, which is our project. The guaranteed contiguous memory allocator is a variant of CMA that guarantees fast latency of allocation and the success of allocation. And it also keeps the memory utilization as well. The idea behind the GCMA is very simple. It just follows the primary and secondary client idea of the CMA to keep the memory utilization high enough. But the difference between the GCMA and the CMA is the selection of the secondary client. We select the only nice ones as the secondary client. For fast latency, the secondary client should be able to vocate the reserved area as soon as required without any tech, such as moving content to outer memory region. And for success of the allocation, it should be out of kernel control if it is in control of the kernel and kernel thread because if it is in control of the kernel, any kernel thread can hold the page. And finally, for memory utilization, most pages should be able to be the secondary client. In short, this is the key. We use the front swap and the clean cache as the secondary client of the GCMA. The front swap and clean cache each uh, accommodate the pages swapped out and the pa clean pages evicted out from the page cache. Bec yeah. The pages for write-through mode front swap is one type of our secondary client. It could be discarded immediately because the content of the page is written through the, already written through the, to swap device. And the kernel thinks it's already swapped out. And most anonymous pages could be covered by this case. And we recommend users to use GRAM as a swap device to minimize the write-through overhead to the swap device. Uh, second, we use the pages for a clean cache as a secondary client of the GCMA. The pages for clean cache could be discarded because the content in storage is already up to date because the page is clean page. And the kernel thinks it's already evicted out too, so it's out of control of the kernel. And lots of the file backed pages could be the case. And we have started the project with this assumption only, but we have found that there is some additional good point. First, the pages we are using as a secondary client of the GCMA are already expected to not be accessed again soon by the page reclaiming algorithm of the Linux kernel. So discarding the secondary client pages would not affect the system performance much because it, the pages are already judged as unnecessary. And secondary, secondary uh, the use, the allocation for the secondary client occurs with only severe workload. I, it means if there is no memory pressure, there will be no allocation for the secondary client. So in peaceful case, in many cases, there will be no overhead at all. So the workflow of the GCMA is very simple. We reserve the memory area in early boot time, and if a page is swapped out or if it is from the page cache, keep the content of the page in the reserved area. And if the system requires the content of the page again, then give it back from the reserved, date, reserved area. And if a contiguous memory allocation requires area being used by those pages, we just discard those pages and use the area for contiguous memory allocation. If the system requires the page that has been already discarded for the continuous allocation, then we just say it is discarded, and then the system can find the content of the page from the swap device of, or the uh, storage, because the content of the pages are already written through the swap device or is already up to date in the storage. So the architecture of the GCMA is as shown below. We, the characteristic of the GCMA is one, one thing I would like to note is that we are reusing the interface of the CMA. Users of the GCMA can just turn every code using the CMA to GCMA by just turning on one kind of configuration, or they can also use the CMA and GCMA selectively on a single system. 
I mean, the CMA and GCMA can coexist on a single system. It means that we are not we are not trying to substitute the CMA. We also know that the GCMA idea has many limitations and CMA have many strong points. So we believe that the CMA and GCMA can coexist and can help each other. And secondly, in GCMA architecture, we used, we have implemented a, another subsystem called discardable memory. It is a after an abstraction for backend of the front swap and clean cache because the front swap and clean cache is just an interface and the implementation of the backend of them is charge of the user, charge of the programmers. We should have implement the backend for clean cache and front swap for GCMA. And because it was very complex and it was uh, a little hard to maintain, I have developed another abstraction layer for them. Uh, it works as a last chance cache for secondary client pages using GCMA reserved area, and it manages the index for pages using hash table and the arbitrary based bucket in the hash table. And it evicts the pages in least recently used scheme if the reserved area is full. So we have implemented GCMA on Linux v3.18 and then re-implemented it on v4.10 and 4.17. The entire implementation used just 1,000, 1,500 lines of code and it has ported and evaluated on Raspberry Pi 2 for evaluation on low-end systems and a high-end server for evaluation of the performance for continuous memory location. And the code, the source code is available on the GPL v3 license at GitHub, and the second version RFC has been submitted to LKML. Now, I would like to introduce the evaluation result of the GCMA for a low-end device. For experimental evaluation, we have set it of some device. We have used the Raspberry Pi 2, which utilizing the <laughs> ARM Cortex A7 and one gigabyte LPDDR2 SDRAM and class 10 SanDisk 16 gigabyte micro SD card. And we have used three configurations to compare the baseline and the CMA based system and the GCMA based system. We have used Raspberry Pi customized Linux kernel version 3.18.11, and we have configured 100 megabyte swap device and uh, 256 megabyte reserved area for baseline, and the 256 megabyte CMA area for CMA case, and the 256 megabyte GCMA area, and 100 megabyte GRAM based swap for GCMA. And we have used the three workloads. For continuous memory location, we have just uh, programmed a simple kernel driver which continuously uh, allocates continuous memory. And we have used Blockbench to uh, simulate the realistic file system workload which can incur the memory pressure. And Finally, we, uh, use, we have used the camera shot, which is repeatedly taking the picture using the Raspberry Pi 2 camera module with 10 second interval between each taking shot. Uh, first, we have measured the basic contiguous memory allocation latency without the background workload. In this case, we have just measured the latency of the contiguous memory allocation for various number of page, number of, number of contiguous pages. And the result is as shown below. The black line shows the latency of the GCMA, while the gray line shows the uh, latency of the CMA. The GCMA shows 14.89 times to 100 and 29 times faster latency compared to CMA. And the CMA has even failed once for 
32,768 contiguous pages allocation, even though there was no background task. And we have measured the latency for only 1,024 contiguous pages without the background workload. It still shows that the GCMA latency is much shorter than that of the CMA. And it also shows that the latency of the CMA is much predictable than the, that of the CMA. And we have also measured the latency for taking photo of the camera app of the Raspberry Pi. The camera app is the official application, the built-in application of the Raspberry Pi 2. And we have used the background task block bench to simulate the memory pressure of the realistic workload. And in, the, it, in this result, we have shown that uh, GCMA keeps latency the latency as fast as the reserved area technique configured system, while the GCMA shows more than five second latency for taking only a picture. And finally, because the <coughs> GCMA is utilizing the secondary client as a uh, front swap and clean cache, it should have more overhead to produce the uh, reclaiming, well, reclaiming task. So the GCMA could harm the performance of the system. So we have uh, evaluated the performance of the block bench on CMA-based and GCMA-based system. Uh, surprisingly, the GCMA performance GCMA-based system's performance was even better than the, that of the CMA-based system. And these two bar graphs show the scores of the block bench when they're over the background workload, which is contiguously uh, trying to taking a photo. And we can show that the taking photo can uh, clearly reduce the performance of the system for CMA. However, in case of GCMA, the background workload of the taking photo didn't reduce the system performance so much, though the difference is just not so big. And finally, I would, this is the evaluation result of the GCMA for THP. Uh, to, as I have said up before, the huge pages are also needs continuous memory allocation, and the GCMA can help the transparent huge page allocation. So we have implemented transparent huge page using the GCMA. So for this experimental setup, we have used the Intel Xeon E7 8870 V3 CPU, and the system has the 1,024 L2 TLB entries, and it utilizes uh, 600 gigabytes DDR4 memory and 500 gigabytes Intel SSD, and the baseline kernel is Linux v4.10. And we have uh, five four configurations. First, the no THP means the THP disabled system, and the THP.BD means the THP system using the body allocator as huge page allocation. So the THP.BD can be set as a baseline system, and the THP.CMA means the GCMA-based THP enabled. In this configuration, the THP system has modified to use GCMA to allocate the huge page and the THP.PC. This is one that I have made to show the best case because the, even th though I have said that GCMA, GCMA is faster than CMA, it is still slower than the body allocator because body allocator is highly optimized and the, our GCMA is using just uh, bitmap based page management 
as the CMA does. So basic latency for allocation of the G GCMA was slower than the, that of the body allocator. So we have configured another system that uses the body allocator as a huge page allocator for first time. And if the body allocator fails to allocate the contiguous memory area for a huge page because of the fragmentation, then we can fall back to the GCMA before fall back to the regular pages. And this, these four configuration have the have another counterpart that have dot f suffix. It means the dot f suffix means the same systems on the fragmented memory. And we have used two kinds of workloads. We have used spec CPU 2006, which and because there are so many workloads, we have chosen only two workloads, which is widely known to be known to uh, memory memory <coughs> using huge memory. And we have also used the TPCH strong test, which is simulating the real world OL AP workloads. So the first the performance of Spec CPU 2006 was as below. Uh, the left one is the normalized runtime of the 429.mcf, and the right side shows the performance of the 471.omnetpp. The runtime has normalized to the no THP case, and as we can show, without the fragmentation, the every THP variant shows the clear performance improvement. But with fragmentation, the baseline system performance getting worse. And the THP, original THP based system also shows worst performance, while the GCMA based THP system shows still enhanced performance. As a result, the GCMA for THP shows 56 times higher performance compared to the original THP on the fragmentation for 429.mcf. However, the impact of the GCMA for THP is dependent to the workload, as we can show on the right side. And we have also evaluated the performance of TPCH. TPCH is a simulation of the real world OL AP workloads. And we have used power test. The OL AP workload is constructed with 22 queries. And the, in the power test, we just run the queries sequentially and then measure the latency for the each query. And the runtime is normalized by the THP.BC.F, which means this configuration is the THP system using GCMA as a first time fallback for body allocator and it is on the fragmented memory. So uh, we can show that this y axis as the speed up of, the, of our uh, GCMA based THP system on fragmentation. So as you, we can show the query seven, almost every queries have improved performance by using the uh, GCMA for THP. And in best case, two queries have shown more than two times speed up, and four queries have shown uh, more than 1.5 times speed up. And finally, the plan for GCMA. Uh, we are trying to we aim to merge the GCMA to mainline Linux, and we would like to not just merge the GCMA as it is now, but we would like to unify the solutions on the CMA interface. So as I have said before, there are so many existing solutions, and though almost every existing solutions have limitations, they can be used very well for some specific case. So, uh, and because there are many solutions and interface for continuous memory allocation, the so many interfaces can confuse newcoming programmers, and we don't want to increase the confusion 
the computation with our GCMA. So GCMA is developed to coexist with CMA rather than just substitute it. And it is already using the CMA interface. So you can already coexist with CMA. And so maybe we are planning to design the interface to be could select the secondary client for each CMA region. For example, the non and migrate, migratable and discardable for each for reservation and CMA and our GCMA. And currently we are developing a patch set for the idea and it aims to be merged to the mainline. So the patch set will include updated evaluation result as well. So the conclusion. The continuous memory location needs improvement. The hardware-based solutions are expensive for low-end devices and impose overhead and cannot provide real contiguous memory. And CMA is a little slow in many cases, and body allocator is very restricted. So the GCMA guarantees fast latency and success of allocation and reasonable memory utilization. It achieves the goals by utilizing nice secondary clients, the pages for front swap and the clean cache. Allocation latency of the GCMA is as fast as the reserved area technique and GCMA can be used for THP allocation fallback. And it showed the 130 times and 10 times shorter latency for contiguous memory allocation and taking a photo <coughs> compared to CMA based systems respectively. And more than five, fifth percent and 100% performance improvement achieved for 7 over 24 and 3 over 24 realistic workloads. And we are planning to release the official version and updated evaluation results in near future to the Linux kernel community. Okay. Thanks. Is there any question? Uh, thanks for your talk. As someone who's worked with CMA before, this is definitely good work. Uh, a few years ago, I, a colleague had tried something similar as uh, involving clean cache and noticed some degradation in file system benchmarks. Admittedly, that was many ker kernel versions ago on, on older kernels. I'm curious if you ran any file system benchmarks or storage benchmarks to see if there were any degra degradation in throughput there. Uh, we have used only the blog bench, which is known as the file system benchmark. And the result was, as I shown, it was not, very, not bad, but I think we need some more severe case evaluation too, yeah. Though we have seen the good result, but I think there would be many corner cases, and if we use the more uh, hardcore workloads, maybe we can show the uh, limitation of the GCMA. And that's why we are not trying to substitute the CMA and rather than we are trying to use coexist with the CMA because in such a case, the CMA would work very well in such a case by the design and idea. I think th so, yeah. any working set memory. So GCMA always should store any streaming IO file back pages. So definitely it lose the performance. But recently uh, MM page working set patches applied by Johannes. So one of the idea is to filter out the not working set page to store clean back pages. So it will be improve a little bit. It could be one of the idea to improve five inch mark. Uh, first, I'm very sympathetic on the difficulties of merging PhD code in the kernel, and I wish you luck with that. Um, on Laura's point on the use of I/O benchmarks, I recently had reason to look at fragmentation again, 
and to reduce both the levels of fragmentation and the latency. And as part of that, I'll just leave a caution around the use of I.O. benchmarks to evaluate the patch set. I think it's very easy for you to artificially get stuck into a hole that, is, that, is, uh, that you don't belong in. And it's this. If you use any reservation-based scheme, like GCMA, CMA, or what I am using, which in this case is boosted watermarks, you hit into a threshold where I.O. benchmarks appear to go down because they're actually bound by page cache residency. And it's a trade-off inherently between your throughput and your, the guarantees that you're trying to give. So when you are constructing your I.O. benchmarks, pay careful attention to see if they're tuned to the overall size of memory. If there are any use of reservation, it's going to cause a degradation in the I.O. performance, and it would seem to halt up the entire patch set. And this needs to be balanced with, yes, this benchmark is hit, but that's because functionally it has less memory to work with. So either the benchmark should be tuned to the amount of unreserved memory, or it should be capped in some level. Just pay a certain amount of care there when someone says, have you tried a file system benchmark? That it's very easy to get thrown into a hole when you have reservations. Yeah. Thank you very much for the recommendation. Uh, any other questions? Yep. Uh, hi. So uh, I uh, checked the old submissions from three years ago, and I noticed that the largest uh, complaint was that the new code was quite large and introducing lots of new infrastructure and it was viewed as if CMA could be just modified, it, it would make much better code. So uh, in your current uh, attempts, do you think the new submission will, will be with uh, th this review incorporated or, uh, or did, did you manage to shrink the code? so far? Oh, sure, I should, I do. And I, and I also expect that if the code is merged, and then I should manage the code, and I believe that some corporation would hire me to uh, stop the management. <laughs> well, it doesn't touch any MM core stuff. It's self-contained subsystem, so I, I don't think it's uh, very complex, complex stuff at all. It's very easy to merge in, I guess, like file systems, <laughs> standalone stuff. Yes, it is really very simple. The code is very simple, and only the part the GCMA is modifying is the interface of the CMA. That's all. Yeah, good to see the work. Um, one of your graphs indicated GCMA performing better than the, you know, reserved uh, scheme. So I was just curious, you know, what uh, what was the reason for that? Are you saying about this slide? Uh, no, I think the other. Um, uh, j just yeah, this one. Yeah, there was the case that GCMA based evaluation was better than even the baseline. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I think that it would be some, there was, I think there would be some error of the measurement, maybe. Um, so uh, kind of maybe more of a naive question, but um, I've done some work with CMA where I was seeing allocation failures where there's still apparently free memory, so it seemed to be a fragmentation issue. Did you, in, in your work, do you have any tools or things that you were using to do the analysis on CMA for why these failures were occurring and, and anything that was useful there? Uh, excuse me? Did you have any tools or anything you were using while you were doing analysis on CMA for you know, why things were failing or anything that was helpful to see kind of the levels of fragmentation or anything like that? Uh, no. Unfortunately. Right. I think we have time I think for I should one more do. question. This is, unfortunately, this is not a question, but in respect to John's uh, question, uh, while I don't have personal experience on CMA, the limiting factors on latency of allocation of THP 
came down into the rare case because the page was penned for a long period of time. But fundamentally, it was at the time that it started hitting into latency issues during allocation, the system is already low on memory, in which case compaction is very likely to give up early on the grounds so it doesn't happen, uh, happen, or that it ends into a reclaim cycle where it takes multiple attempts to allocate on that basis. Now, again, I've posted a series that mitigates this somewhat, but it's in dire need of review and further evaluation. But part of that was that it did reduce allocation latency down by 70 to 80 percent. Um, mostly by playing small tricks. So I think it's unfair to evaluate GCMA and reasons why CMA uh, had issues before, or even the standard bully allocator, because its use of the G thing makes it fundamentally different. Um, so th <coughs> there, are, there are reasons why CMA failed in the past, and there's reasons why the bully allocator fails. Uh, but there are discrete problems that would be fixed orthogonally to the GCMA work. All right. Um, um, can, I, can I say sure. just one more sentence? Uh, and I have forgot to say that the project has started with uh, Min Chang Kim, who have helped my answer. Yes, that's it. All right, thank you very much.